I'm uh, I'm really having the fun, kind of just thumping. You know that thing you did when you were four, that was pointless and childish, and you did it anyway, where you would like flick the back of somebody's ear. Yes. Because you could, and there was really nothing they could do about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm kind of doing that right now, but about the Zack Snyder cut to people on Twitter. Wait, hold on, hold on. And I shouldn't hold, hold enjoy on. This it. This is so oh, good. Sorry. We got it. All right, I'm gonna go live. I'm gonna go live. Oh, okay. Because okay. this is great. This is exactly what I want to talk about. Okay. All right, going live. Bang. Hopefully this works. Let's see if time, uh, Spectrum. I keep wanting to call them Time Warner. Hmm. Wait. Are they not let, part of? Well, they are. They changed the name to Spectrum to to swerve the hate that uh. Oh. You know, to the parent company of Time Warner. Wow. Yeah, we were, Bruce, we were, when we were working at the Funhouse offices, like the branding on that office changed because there was like a, tr there's like a training facility next to our, you remember that? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I remember the vans like getting new decals slapped on the side. Hold on. The restream key doesn't work. No. No, we're not even live. Hold on. God bless this successful Oh, rebrand. I know what it is. It's like Showbiz Pizza, or sorry, Chuck E. Cheese Pizza becoming. What was it? It's like Grimaldi's or yeah, something Yeah, like they, that? they just, you know, they've been trying to fool people into buying their pizza. <laughs> okay. It's weird because actually, I remember liking that pizza, but I was also, all right, I was also a child. Let's see if this goes live. Let's see if this actually works. When I was but a child, I enjoyed eating <laughs> a paper towel with cheese on it. <laughs> um, I, mean, I, I probably would still like that. I'm pretty sure we are live on the internet now. Wow. Unbelievable. How did that happen? What? It, it's, are we it's, internet? It's one of those things that's like a miracle every time it happens for me now in the last week, so... Oh yeah, I saw you were streaming on your phone yesterday. How, how's that been? I, uh, so I used my... I used Google Fi's internet to stream for four hours at 5,000 megabits a second, and it worked pretty well. Wow. Honestly, like, it worked really... Like, just other than some very, very slight drops, I, I was playing Subnautica, and it worked like a charm. So... It was great. Uh, That's pretty cool. It was, it was, you know, I'm going to say that it's not pretty cool. And the reason I'm going to say that is because it was a TV tray on top of a chair with a cooking sheet on top of that to make sure that my phone didn't get too hot, but also was near a window to get the best reception. And I wanted to put a bullet in my head because, <laughs> because the internet that I'm paying so much money for a month wasn't working. <laughs> So yep. it was neat, but also I wanted to just murder myself. So yeah, did you did you feel like a a tech pirate, like a <laughs> yeah. like you're broadcasting underground radio? I, I felt yeah, I Lawrence for one brief second I felt like a hacker, but then I realized I was paying for it, and then I was like, no. oh, that's not, I'm not I'm not a hacker at all. I'm just uh, paying for it twice over. I'm just paying for it. Yeah, I was no. paying for an internet service that doesn't work, and then paying for my phone. <laughs> So, <laughs> but, but right, paying twice oh, yeah. for something. What is the? Is it just a phone tethering thing, or do that's you have to it? Pay an extra no usage. No, Google Fi is uh, you don't have to pay extra usage for a hotspot. So um, that's pretty great. Yeah, no, honestly, it is pretty great, and uh, I was super impressed with how well it worked. So, in the case that you all, uh, ever want to do that, use Google Fi. <laughs> I I might have to. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Stream tips from Bruce Green. Hey, uh, that's a new. I'll do a, I'll do an new segment. I'll oh. do an intro. We got one. Welcome to talk to the internet. That's what it. That's what all. Yeah, that was it. Wow. Smooth. Number twenty nine. You didn't even stutter, Bruce. That was. <laughs> that was smooth. Number. How to get through that? Got, how to get that all that out? That's so quick. It's twenty nine. Yeah. Is it twenty nine? Okay. It is. Yeah. Uh, Great. Uh, wow. We got. Tell them about all the segments we have prepared, Bruce. Well, we've got one segment called. Uh, Put back the Snyder Cut. Hashtag put back the Snyder Cut. And then we have... Yeah, we're gonna. that's going to go for about an hour and 25. So what's left to... Yeah, yeah. What we got for the next five minutes? And then the, oh. I, I have a segment. Okay, yeah. Oh. Yeah, please. Uh, I'm, I'll call it, Does It Have a Dong in It? And it's, uh, <laughs> and it's a segment of a, a brief retrospective of my experience modding Oblivion and the, the constant fear... <laughs> Of if there's a hidden dong in this mod that I'm downloading. So wait, you don't you just download mods on stream live? You don't and then you don't check them well, beforehand? No, I don't know. I I spend hours off stream compiling a list and tr troubleshooting. Sure. But even then, 
some of these mods manage to slip in dongs <laughs> without my knowledge, and then it comes out on stream, and we almost had a, yeah, a, a slip uh, on stream last night, so I, I have a story about that. Ooh, a tip slip? You gotta be careful. Uh, yeah, it was almost a tip slip. It was a cheek slip. Uh, we saw some oh, that's no big deal. strong ass cheek. Man, uh, I mean, you're behind. allowed. You're allowed peen on on Twitch, yeah. You just can't well, fixate on the peen. Right. It can't. You're allowed. You're allowed peen if it's a natural part of the game. If you're modding it into the game, though. Ah. That I think is where it. Well, but I, I think I'd be okay because I, I I earnestly did not know it was yes, there. Yeah. And I have good excuse, but still, I don't want to run that risk of uh, slipping peen to all the viewers without a proper warning. So. I think people know. I saw a big old penis in GTA. What really? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't big. Yeah, GTA Five. If the altruist cult up in the mountains. Oh mm. yeah. If you bring enough drifters to them, then there's a mission to like basically, you know, kill them all. And some of them just aren't wearing pants. So there's that. I think people cool. people because like Witcher, Witcher has sex in it and topless chicks yeah. and all that. But like, but it's like '80s tasteful sex. It's all like silhouetted. Yeah. You know, like to... panning shots of caressing. Like if Kraken was like streaming a penis, it was like whoa. Bros, yeah. and like, Ooh, what's your penis emotes up? And then everybody's like penis emoting and stuff. Like that would be, you probably get banned. <laughs> Put your penis. Up. <laughs> you probably get, but I mean, like, where my dongers at? <laughs> but uh, but since Kraken is obviously trying to make sure that it doesn't happen, then I, he won't get banned or anything. So okay, yeah. radical idea. The, I like to think we've rebranded this podcast just now. I didn't warn you guys, but sorry. Great. This is now this is now a think tank and incubator for radically uh, progressive Twitch streaming ideas. And here's mine for today. Mm -hmm. Let's put it up on the whiteboard. Just a spitball, just to start. Twenty four hour meat spin stream. Okay. Oh God. The COS, but yeah, just, but but what? Well, I mean, but I didn't mod it. That's just what meat spin is. So if I just stare directly at meat spin for twenty four hours, uh, and then people have to give me money for that, what do you guys think? Well, okay, I, I actually have discussed this concept, not particularly that concept, but an offshoot of it before, where if you set up a webcam and the entire stream is just your webcam of mm. you watching it, but there's no actual meat spin on your screen, that is, that is acceptable that's fine. to my understanding. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, although the, I think the song is copyright, so that would then be a, an issue. But I think you could get away with doing a 24-hour stream of just you watching meat spin and then talking through your experience or your thoughts or you know how you're feeling emotionally at the time. I think you could do that as long as you don't say what the URL is and put it like put a link in or anything because like yeah. you also can't push to the website. Yeah, you can't you can't push to it. Yeah. So, but you but you can watch a man push into it. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Bruce. We finally it was right there, and he didn't hesitate. I mean, I, yeah, I got to I got to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like that man did to the other man on Meatspin. <laughs> I'm just, by the way, I'm not going to tell you what the URL is. I'm not going to tell you, you what it is. You know, Bruce, it wasn't until you mentioned that that I even thought about the penetrative aspects of Meatspin. Yeah, I was always distracted by that part. Yeah, there's the the, the forward-facing motion is always the thing that captivated my attention. So The windmill, if you will. The mm -hmm. helicopter. Yes, the propeller. Yeah, the helicopter. Yeah. I mean, um, it's much like how you don't think about the inner workings of a windmill. You only think about the outer spinning, you know, like there, all the magic's going on behind the scenes. It's all the, uh, it's where the grinding is and, oof. you know, producing of the grain. Oof. And, but really all anyone thinks about is just the, the spinning wind. The, uh, the talent, what? As, as it were. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, I just realized <laughs> that normally this video on YouTube makes about $75 in ads, but this one's not going to make any money because it's demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> How do they know? They're going to There's know. no way that YouTube has yeah. content ID waveform analysis to hear somebody talk about me. That's spin. that's actually not yeah. that's actually not true and I can tell you how I know. <laughs> for, yeah, no, you're probably right. Well, they they do and they and they do it for things like 911 and uh mm. for like um let's just get them all out there now. No, I mean, I, get, I, you know, in for a penny, in for a pen. I, yeah. I'll bleep them out in the end. I, yeah, I don't know that we should do that. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think we should do that. But if you make jokes like that, they actually do know, and they will mm -hmm. demonetize the video. They will. And they also flag you for then they flag potentially, you. That's correct. you know, content that is not suitable for advertising. That, and then you make a third of what you're making a year ago. Not that I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> <anything>. <laughs> um, Kraken is correct. Uh, let's just say YouTube is a trash fire. And, yeah. Uh, 
Boy, am I glad I'm on Twitch. <laughs> that's, yes. That's what I, that's what I say. Big same. I have a question for you guys. Um, I recently read an article from uh, someone who was an intern at Google. It was like their third internship. And they were basically writing about the experience and the tech bubble in San Francisco and all that. And I, re- I realized when, uh, when the author was describing the work accoutrements at Google, like the, the, the branded buses, the meals catered for, like dudes who will like play or they'll like try to eat at every cafe on campus in a given day. Like that's their work day is they just take it super easy. They work for two hours and then play video games. Like apparently this stuff is all true. Uh, I don't know how severe it is, but I did find myself being in- incredibly resentful that uh, that YouTube or Google, in fact, was operating that way when uh, I'm putting content on YouTube and the ad revenue is just dying. <laughs> so I, f- I feel like it made me feel like revenue that could have been going to me or to other creators was m- was being used to subsidize a ridiculous kind of utopian fantasy of a workplace <laughs> that the author argued was, was really just the reinterpretation of like the perfect 12 year old boy's bedroom. Um, hmm. I don't know. Do you, how do you guys feel about Ooh, that? How, like, bless you. Bless you. How, uh, how Google or other tech companies may treat their workers when, I guess Amazon's been under the fire for this lately. But specifically for YouTube, and given how much of a trash fire YouTube is right now, do you resent the company at all for having like lavish working conditions and high salaries? Craig, why don't you um, go ahead? No, I mean, like... Uh, I, that's an interesting question. I mean... It's the perspective of like if you're gonna hate them for being successful, then you have to hate the system of capitalism. I think like hmm. this isn't a new thing that you can have experienced bad service from a company, and then that company is still doing well. You know, like I think this is just one example out of many, 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 many where like they don't really care what you as an individual user think. They care more about their advertisers and the, you know, their relations to the government in terms of how much leeway they're going to get. They care about, you know, being able to set a standard for children programming, for example, and being able to be like a a, a safe household name that, you know, is going to stay relevant for the next decade. So, like, do I blame them as a company for focusing on the things that they care about. I mean, I don't know. If, if it's working for them, it's hard to say, no, you shouldn't do that. It's like yeah. just a shame that it's moved so far from what it originally was, which was for the creators. So it's more just like it's a shame that the system works that way where they're rewarded for, you know, punishing the little guy as the little guy. Yep. I, I don't know. It, it it seems like I'm I'm blaming the wrong person if I'm to say that, you know, they shouldn't be enjoying good employee benefits no no i i i I agree with crike and i uh because like i see what you're saying lawrence and it's the same with amazon's workers too like we're like amazon's workers are being treated like garbage and and amazon's making money hand over fist um and so there's there's always the biggest spotlight on the biggest companies and so there's always going to be a number of people being like you're not doing the right thing here and you're not doing the right thing here and they're never gonna be able to please everybody um but at the same time I, it's like one of those things where like if you if you've always got your ear to the ground and you then because this is what I would do but on a much smaller scale with Funhouse I, I always had my sort of eyes on the comments whether or not it was YouTube or Reddit or whatever else and then the more comments that I saw and the more uh, commonplace they became I started to go okay maybe I should actually reanalyze specific aspects of the business according to what those comments are and then ideally we'd reach out to either the people directly or, you know, do something in public that said, hey, we're listening to you. Um, hopefully this will help you uh, realize that we do care. And it's the same with Amazon. Amazon should be going like, you know what? We have decided to now pay all of our Amazon workers time and a half for the next six weeks or whatever else. Um, and Or same with Google and YouTube where it's, they're like, uh, you know what? We, we realize that all of our uh, workers are working here. They work one hour a day and then they get to chill out for another seven. So you as creators get an extra 50 bucks a month or, you know, who knows, right? And then at least it's something. It's like an olive branch that they're putting out to to their uh, their viewers. But 
But on the other hand, it's so weird because if you're the CEO of Google and you're sitting there going like, these fuck, they're just fucking complainers. They're just whiners. Like, what, uh, like, why do we have to listen to them? You know, and, and that's just, honestly, I'm sure like Bezos is like, I've just donated $4 billion to, you know, philanthropic causes. Why the fuck do I got to do this other shit? And it's, that's when I feel like you start becoming out of touch <laughs> is when you start thinking to yourself, this doesn't matter. Uh, this only the other things yeah. that I have done matters, you know, like, so that's the, it's, this it's r- like when you're held to a different standard than anyone else in the world and you, you it's hard to reconcile that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, you can see kind of both sides of it. Cause I, I totally sure can. I would get defensive in that position too. If I'm like, you know, why, why is it suddenly all my responsibility when I've never interacted with this cause or these individuals ever? Right. But you know, I don't know. Like, it, for me, I think it would be like get your own house in shape first before looking to others. I don't know if that's yeah. a saying. I, I I feel like, but you know, for an Amazon to say, okay, we're having issues with you know keeping everyone in our company like safe and and satisfied. Then I think I would be first reinforcing that pillar before then looking outwards. So I feel like YouTube's probably in that same similar position where. Uh, I mean, Google's always been this way. They, they've been, they try out experimental kind of directions and then they let it, you know, float for maybe three months to a year right. and then reevaluate if it was actually useful. And if it is, they double down. If it's not, they just cut it and forget it exists. Like, you know, there are so many examples of this. You look at like the Google Cardboard or like, yeah. you know, the, but I don't know if you know, is Google Glass still a thing? Um, but there's... There's tons of, uh, you know, Google one-offs. So I'm, I'm sure with YouTube, they function that way too, where they have like a ton of different, like YouTube gaming was like a, a thing for a year and a half or less and then yeah. vanished again. So um, I think it's probably also hard for a company that of that size to, to like have rolling updates be, because everything feels like a trial. I, I, I don't remember the last time YouTube's been so steady that I know what to expect a month or two later. It's like everyone's kind of given up trying to predict what it's, what it's doing. Yeah. No, I don't. And, and that's why I think that's why people are shifting to Twitch because while, while Twitch is also unpredictable, it is at least talking directly to your audience. And, mm-hmm. and, and candidly, every time I talk to YouTube about this, whenever I talk to YouTube about like, Hey, my CPM, and this is, this is months ago, but like whenever CPM is really, really low or like, I don't understand that. Like, why are the ads not running the blah, blah, blah. They would always say, they'd literally just redirect me. They'd be like, hey, yeah, don't worry about like that. They, they, would, they would say like, hey, you know what? Try out uh, subscribers on your channel or try out Super Chat. And like, I was always like, well, blah, 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 but what about the other stuff that YouTube has lived on for 15 years? And they're like, no, no, do the subscriber and Super Chat. And I was like, okay, all right. Well, never mind. I'll go to Twitch. <laughs> you know, like, and that's the, that's that. I mean, uh, it's, it's funny. It's worth also saying that that's a miracle you even had someone to talk to because I think eighty percent of the oh yeah you know all more than that it's like ninety nine point nine percent of the creators out there uh, don't have any contact at YouTube or you know there may be like a partner rep that manages like ten thousand partners but when you write to them all you really get in response is like a uh, a uh, like I don't know copy pasted thing <laughs> yep no so yeah, you're right I don't know Lawrence what do you think. You asked the question. Mm, well, I mean, I, I guess I kind of injected some of my own opinion. I, I when I was reading it, I was like, why? Why did my yeah? Why did my money get slashed by two thirds? Um, I, I know that it's all it's all like a, a moving system, and certainly there's probably a lot of advertisers who aren't throwing a lot of money at YouTube now because they're they're getting conservative. So I, I try to appreciate that it's not you know it's not I can't draw a direct line between A to B, but it does kind of gall me that. Uh, you know, to a lesser extent, me, but some other people that rely on YouTube as a revenue platform are just getting thrashed around. Meanwhile, there's there's some dude who his entire workday is trying to eat nine different flavors of soft serve. Um, <laughs> and that's that, you know, I'm extrapolating a lot, but <laughs> it certainly sounds like that's the reality. And, and I think those uh, th- those accounts have been borne out by a few different a few different people in a few different ways. So it's it's a little frustrating. Also, I think yesterday YouTube just kind of announced their new YouTube Select ad pool, which is like kind of their version of YouTube Preferred, uh, another 
another like group of very brand safe channels that they're going to use to try to target big dollar advertisers. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was it was a pretty small headline, but um, yeah, it's there. They announced it ahead of the upfronts, so I guess they want to make sure that the information's out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't I don't mind it because kind of like you were saying, Bruce. I'm I'm just thankful that there is that Twitch at least by its definition and by its its architecture is a platform where the revenue goes direct from the viewer to the creator, which it's it's weird. I guess YouTube just didn't start that way. They wanted to get in the ad game, and it seems like Twitch is trying to, which kind of scares me. Um, to some degree, I can't fault Twitch for trying to open up other revenue revenue streams, especially when I'm sure they get a whiff of like how much those big ad deals are worth. Uh, they probably want to take a chunk of all Twitch subs and be breaking in, you know, Ford and McDonald's money. Um, so I can't fault them for trying to, to grow the business, but it does it does sort of scare me a little bit. I To, to some degree, though, I, I appreciate what Twitch did, because Kraken, I think you'd mentioned it earlier, they ran these, like, bonus windows where they were actually incentivizing, incentivizing creators and streamers to run more ads to try to get their ad volume up so they could sell more ads. Mm-hmm. Um, the way I see that happen on YouTube is if I upload a video and have it algorithmically place ad breaks, it puts one every two and a half minutes, <laughs> yeah. which is is inhuman. It's it's ridiculous. So my my poly, like my thing now is I'll go through YouTube and just delete out like 80% of the ad breaks that automatically adds in just to make it like a fun viewing experience. Yeah. So yeah. It's uh, I I think it's just cl- like the fewer interested parties, the better, because that means fewer bytes get taken out of the money, and then the creative process and the support process, and the interaction between creator and and viewer is so much cleaner. Um, because yeah, Bruce, kind of what you were talking about, it, it it gets messy when you have to consider multiple as a producer. I mean, you have to consider multiple audiences. So there's your actual audience, which arguably should always be the most important. Actually, not arguably. It should always be the most important. If you're not making content people want to watch, what are you doing? <laughs> um, which, you know, I've, I've actually seen tons of productions where the goal was not to attract an audience or even create a good product, which is, those get weird. But once it gets more into the YouTube side of, of production, then you're like, okay, now you have to make the advertisers happy. Or you have to make the content in a way that's advertiser appropriate, so that if an advertiser looks, they might want to buy it. And then that that can sometimes be at odd with what viewers want. Uh, then you have to like be careful of what you say and how you comport yourself. You have to be careful of how this content gets reacted to with the, within your own company, and things like that. And it just gets, man, it just gets messy. It's, it's nowhere near as clean as I think people like to think it is, which is... Let's just turn on the cameras, make fart noises for an hour and a half, and and go on with our day. Yeah. Although that'd be cool. I mean, that's what <laughs> I was gonna say. Like that's what, what, what Logan Paul would go to the suicide for us, and it's like that mm. that that blew his business up even further than it already was. So it's like, I, it's it's such a weird. That's another thing too with Twitch and YouTube. Their their scale is so big that you can have so many different creators on so many different sides. You can have Ryan's toy review, and then also Logan Paul. What, and both of them are blowing up. And it's like, I don't know whose responsibility it is at YouTube to, to go to Logan Paul and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, and then like punish him and punish his ads. But then also they've got Ryan Toy Review, who's like this eight-year-old kid who's blowing up, you know, like, and it's just mm-hmm. doing toy reviews. And it's totally safe. It's, so, it's, so it's weird that there's not accountability across the board. There's only accountability at specific times and for specific people. Yeah. I don't, it's, and it's the same with Twitch. It's the, 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 in terms of banning people and suspending and stuff like that. I, that's what I've seen as well. So, we're gonna say. Yeah, what are you gonna say, Craig? Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to formulate my thoughts because I, I think, to some degree, it, 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 there's kind of two different things at play. One is like you can have global rules on your site, but then it's hard to enforce those all across the board because there's always kind of exceptions. Those exceptions usually result in like a couple of like the, your top performers that are, you know like get some more leeway than than an average joe would you know so to say yeah um and so then you need a team that is intimately aware of every going on for anyone that is in that role of your exceptions so that you can catch a mistake they might make before they make it or if they do make it then respond to it quickly and efficiently yep and also have open communication with them so that you know, there is some, there is some, uh, sorry, Reddit's always distracting me when I'm trying to talk. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting to me because I think Twitch is the same way. It's like, you know, you've got like the top 1.1% of, of streamers that have like a direct line with Twitch. And so when they step out of line, you know, there's kind of a PR huddle on like, how do we deal with this as opposed to like just the rules of Twitch or the rules of YouTube applying across the board because, and that's just the, the reality of any, I don't know, any entertainment industry, yeah. you know, it's like the people that, that garner the biggest audience that supports both the platform and their individuals um, will play by different rules than, than everyone else. That's right. Um, Lawrence and I were just having that conversation right before the podcast, before you hopped on the call, Craig. And we were just talking mm -hmm. about like, cause I was, I was like, man, because I've been doing this for a while in terms of like in television and stuff like that. And uh, I was like, it's just so weird to me because people that are seen as bigger or seen as a, you know, like, a ta I mean, like sometimes sometimes they're the, the talent that's supposedly or that's uh, supposedly supporting the show, like Charlie Sheen with the uh, two and a half men. It's they are treated completely and they could do whatever the fuck they want because they are looked at as the breadwinner for the entire production. Um, and it puts people in this really, really scary position of power where, you know, like if this person isn't completely and totally um, <laughs> mentally there and mentally sound and like actually cares about other people and like wants to help, then they can fuck everybody's day and fuck everybody's week and year. And I mean, like, and we're talking hundreds of people uh, in that production yeah. that, that, and eventually they replaced him. They had to, because he was becoming too much of a liability. And that kind of, that blew my mind because that means that from the very, very top, the top of that network, um, I forget it was, was it ABC? I can't remember what network it was, but the top of the network had to say, we have to get rid of this person because he's ruining people's lives. Like he's ruining this, uh, this production and it had nothing to do with the show's quality. The show's quality was great. Um, but it was all behind the scenes, and I remember being like pretty impressed by that. So yeah, <laughs> yep. Well, that leads us to our next segment, and Craig and I, I did brief you shortly on this before oh, yeah. the podcast. <laughs> uh, so I, I just I didn't want to put Craig on the spot, so he's aware this is happening. Uh, Bruce and I both agreed, and then Kraken also later agreed. I, I think mostly I never through omission. I never agreed. Uh, well, yeah, this is part of the bit that Bruce set up, is that he's like, uh, when we get on the show, I'm going to say I don't agree. No. And I was like, okay, Bruce, uh, if you want, if you not, want to put me in that corner, that's not, fine. Not, not part of it. You want to just do that to me while we're on air, that's fine. If you, if you want to do that, I think that's a good, <laughs> good idea. Um, uh, but Bruce and I did agree, and then Kraken, uh, because he did, not, he did not disagree strongly enough, also agreed uh, that... We would is that all how it works. Is yeah, that going to hold yeah. up in the court of justice? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that we would all actually call someone out right now. So we're going to uh, uh, Bruce and I already did it. Actually, we did it before the podcast. So now it's so your Kriken, turn. It's your turn to let us know who, who the next, uh, who's the next Charlie Sheen? Who, who's mm. a like, let's let's make it personal. Let's make it biting. Who are Kriken. we? Who are we canceling? Am I? Yeah. Am I going to become an icon of cancel culture? The thing that I have hated my whole life. <laughs> yes, um, you are. Uh, because it needs to happen. It's it's for justice, Craig. What you need to right now, right now, uh, a popular streamer that doesn't deserve it, who is a hack. A streamer? Wow, you got to yes. pick a streamer? I didn't realize that. Yep. You said I I had to pick a celebrity, someone I would never have to have contact with, and now you're limiting it to someone in my direct line of work. You're just specifically trying to cancel a a. You're trying to make me burn a bridge that I've yet to walk across. Is what's happening. This is for entertainment, Craig. Let, Logan Paul burned a lot of bridges when he uh, shouted at that dead body, and I need you to do that for me right now. Okay. Uh, but, so well, if you could, you, you said that you and Bruce already picked yours. So can I just, for inspiration, can I hear your picks? Uh, I mean, I try not to be negative, Craig, and you know that. <laughs> no, I, no, I, um, so I, I feel like I, you know what? I'll put it in the liner notes. I'll put it in the liner notes of the podcast. Mm. Um, so and and you know, you we collaborate on those every week. So you'll have tacit input on what that is. Um, so I would appreciate it if you, you could celebrate my uh, spirit of, of uh, cooperation, mm. creative cooperation, yeah. by, uh, by, uh, by bringing something to this bit. This, a, this, a, this is a tough one. This is a tough one, Kraken. And I, I, you know what? We're going to give you a little time. We're gonna, yeah, yeah. Gonna, some, we're gonna get, not too much time, though. We're not too much in, time. in the meantime. We've got to run a show to keep doing it. While, while, while you think about it, though, while you think about it, we should talk about the Snyder Cut. Um, oh, boy. We should talk about how... First of all, I want to take an informal poll of Lawrence and my chat. I want to see 
if you want the Snyder cut, I want you to put yes. If you, <laughs> oh, bless you. If you don't want the Snyder cut, I want. I got to mute when I do that. I'm sorry. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, want, right. I want you to put no. If you want the Snyder cut, put yes. If you don't care or don't want it, put no. And I'm just curious to see how many people. What do you, Lawrence? What do you see? What do you see in our? I see a. I see. Is that fifty fifty? My eyes are telling me. Well. It seems like it's trending a little more towards no. Okay, all right. Um, I would say I would say maybe sixty forty no. Sixty forty no. Sixty. But it's pretty close. I'd say it's pretty close. I'm I am act- um, I'm very surprised that I see more yeses than I do see nos. The the stakes are by the way that you have to sign up for another streaming service. They, that's that. right, HBO Max. Yeah, and it's a year away. Uh, maybe even more than that. Maybe. Maybe we could do a little bit of context because I know nothing of what you're talking about. Oh, oh. well then. Uh, okay, uh, well, Kraken, I had the pleasure, uh, nay, the privilege of seeing the movie Justice League in theaters. Mm. Did you ever see the movie Justice League in theaters no. when it came out? No. No. You didn't. Okay, well, uh, Justice League is a movie about, you know what the movie's about? Right, mm, superheroes. Super. That's right. That's correct. It's like the Avengers, but for DC. So I mean, he, he got the plural part right. Um, there are more than one superhero. That's, so that's good. That's right. There's Batman, Superman, uh, other cool superheroes that you never heard of, like Cyborg, and oh, he's the one with the eyes that that's, turn red. That's right. Also, Wonder Woman's there, and then uh, was wasn't there? <laughs> was, there wasn't there another superhero? You're forgetting Aquaman. Thank you, Aquaman. Um, but. Yeah, co- he said the line. But, yeah, but the coolest part about Justice League is that you sorry, had, I'm ruining it for Kraken. You had never seen any of their movies other than mm-hmm. Superman and maybe a little bit of Batman and Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. So you didn't know anything about Cyborg. You didn't know anything about Aquaman. Yeah, but that's what made it great. <laughs> is that they just kept showing up and they just, there'd be a big music uh, swell and you're like, who is that? You? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but also okay. Zack Snyder was uh, initially the DC mastermind. He was sort of the one that was coming up with the movies and the stories for uh, Batman versus Superman. And he had plans for uh, the Batman, obviously for Justice League, et cetera, et cetera. He, he was sort of the architect of DC movies uh, the same way Kevin Feige is for Marvel. However, um, Zack Snyder, I believe it was a major family emergency that caused him to pull away from uh, Justice League. I think, wasn't it? Lawrence, am I wrong? Am I wrong about that? Am I right? It was, it was a something like that. I, that that was there was a loose there was a loose explanation given, um, and I guess it depends on how conspiratorial you want to get because there for some reason people have concocted wildly complicated complicated narratives around how the production of that movie went. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Joss Whedon did the rest. It was oh, it was a death in the family. It was, well, oh, okay. it, is, it was his daughter committed suicide, which is major. Major, 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 oh, and it was a huge problem for Zach. Um, obviously, never mind. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I, I knew it was something major, and uh, and so then Joss Whedon took over, finishing the movie. Um, well, the movie came out; it was trash, uh, and ever since then, Zack Snyder has himself been feeding into the um, hype machine of there is a Snyder cut of Justice League that exists. That is better and cooler and the greatest superhero movie of all time ever that Zack Snyder edited. And he has I got basically gone on record in like social media, etc. Talked about how he wanted to do this and he wanted to do that and he wanted to do this for all these superheroes. But didn't happen because the studio wouldn't let him and Joss Whedon, blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. So now... People have been begging. I think that would burn a lot of bridges for him. People, well, it didn't, he didn't do it in a mean way, but it was like one of those underhanded, like, I was going to do blank. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh, it's going to be so, it, it would have been so much better. Anyways, um, so the internet's been going crazy about the fact that the Snyder Cut uh, is going to be much, much better than the movie that we saw in theaters. Um, people have been begging uh, DC and Warner Brothers and Zack Snyder to release the Snyder Cut, and they've finally done it. They have said there will be a Snyder Cut and it will be coming out on HBO Max uh, next year. But you got to sign up for HBO Max. So, 
And watch Ju- Justice League again. And watch Justice League again. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but more of it. So I was just curious to see if anybody really was excited about this and would care about it. it sounds like Kraken knows nothing about it. Um, yeah, I, I'm one of the no's. So, <laughs> but Lawrence, I don't know. What, what do you think of it? I'm just, I'm just astounded that, like, how, 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 how can anyone still think that there was a good movie there, or that there will be a good movie there? I mean, Hope Springs Eternal, and God bless, and, and if people are excited about it, then that's a good thing, and I wouldn't try to talk somebody out of enjoying something that they want to enjoy. <sighs> it just, I mean, at what point is it just, is it just wild delusion? Not, again, not that I care. That's, that's what comic books are for. They're for delusion. But, um, I mean, Zack Snyder's never made a great film. 300 was cool. Or rather, it had 15 minutes of cool stuff in it. Um, but why, why do suddenly people think that he's going to be the one to, to fix it? Um, when he's never fixed anything before! I, I... I like Zack Snyder movies, but I also know they're not good, um, and I don't think of uh, I the 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 relentless dedication and the hope behind all of it is the most confusing thing to me, and I just I cannot wrap my brain around it, and I don't know I don't know how or or why people are so attached to DC films when they have largely been very bad, or maybe that's strong, but certainly not good. Yeah, um, I mean, like people will point at Three Hundred and Watchmen. Um, yeah, Watchmen was uh, Watchmen was had some pretty good parts in it, and, and, and I would agree. Three hundred and Watchmen are good. Sucker Punch isn't. Um, <laughs> uh, Superman or not? Sorry, Man of Steel is mediocre. Um, I thought Man of Steel was okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Question about um, what is HBO Max? I, I realized I didn't. Oh uh, yeah, you don't know. So what I know, HBO, I know Max what HBO is. Go is, but HBO Max is a different thing. Is it more money? What is the? It is, is more money. Show? It's more money. So HBO Max is uh, a new streaming service where they have combined everything from Warner Brothers and basically all the, like, so you know how Warner Brothers bought Rooster Teeth and it bought uh, Machinima yeah, yeah, yeah. and it bought blah, 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 blah. It's putting all of those together into one streaming service but calling it HBO Max because it sounds great because HBO has the best... HBO to the max. Right. It, HBO has the best brand recognition and people think, oh, HBO equals quality. Well... They're putting uh-huh. everything into HBO Max. They're calling HBO Max, but it's a bunch of Warner Brothers trash. And a- a- basically everything AT and T owns as well. Um, so that's okay. what that's what it is. It's a new streaming service. Huh. Yeah, it's like the new umbrella service. Because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, but like Verve had kind of bundled a lot of stuff. Yeah. And HBO Max is going to be another umbrella thing that goes over that, and then it's it has like yes, it's going to have uh, Muppets and. Some other like I like Muppets. some big name stuff. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> um, what's What's weird to me is I mean it, it's an how interesting. Much, how much extra headline. do I got to pay to watch much Muppets? <laughs> I don't know. Have they announced pricing structure yet? I don't know. For HBO Max, I'm actually not sure offhand. Uh, I can here. I'll do a little. Go- actually, I don't know. I'm not going to Google here, but um, I'll Google somewhere else. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll look right now. Muppets are well, Disney. Anyway, uh, oh. no, Disney is different. No, that people are saying Muppets are Disney Plus. Uh, pretty sure HBO Max announced a new Muppets show. Are they Sesame are they Street. pulling the proverbial Kermit in half between <laughs> HBO Max and Disney? <laughs> HBO Max is going to be apparently fifteen dollars a month at launch, but a pre order discount offers a twelve dollar monthly rate for the first year if you sign up before May twenty seventh. There you go, twelve dollars a hmm. month. There yeah, is the Muppets early bird now. special. Oh, it's Disney Plus. I'm sorry. No, Sesame Street is what's going to HBO Max. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Okay. Wait, I, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. Sesame Street and Muppets are two op. They're they're not the right. They're different things, right? Different properties. But they've done collaborations before. I'm sure they have. Yes. What is the? What is Kermit to Elmo? I'm I'm having like a, a crisis both, right now. They're both Jim Henson creations. Oh, okay. And I, I think the Muppets have been on the show Sesame Street, but yeah, they I think it's same world but different show. So like the Muppets, same are world, are largely on. I think so. I think there's crossover. Huh. There. Like Big Bird was in in some of the Muppet movies, right? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But like as a cameo, so it's like it's all it's all kind of the world of Jim Henson or whatever. Do they talk um, to each other? Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know if they talk to each other regularly or if they hang out when they're I not. Wonder, I wonder if shows. there's like awkwardness because of their, you know, company <laughs> ownership divide. I want to know. I want to know the specific personal relation between <laughs> Elmo and Kermit. I mean, you're gonna have to look that up know. on your own time because I don't know. <laughs> so I'm, well, someone I'm, in chat says I'll do it right Kermit, now. Kermit is a reporter on Sesame Street. I remember him wearing his like little beige trench coat. Yeah, I remember he was wearing his like little press uniform. Was that what Kermit's role was on the Muppets? Though I thought he was a show producer. Yeah, and he played banjo. Um, so the the Muppets is like is a laugh in styled sketch comedy show that ran on TV. Um, it, it was called The Muppet Show, I believe. Am I wrong about that? I think you're right, yeah. But there, I, that was like, it was just comedy. I'm pretty sure there wasn't like an informational or edutainment aspect to it. Meanwhile, Sesame Street was a show specifically for kids that, uh, in addition to like puppetry and, and puppet comedy, was meant to teach you the alphabet and how to count to ten in Spanish. Right. And the names of shapes and things like that. So Cloudless, Muppet Show was like... Cloudless is saying uh, the Muppets spun off of Sesame Street. So they started ah. on Sesame Street and then spun off. That makes sense. I, I could see that, actually. That's pretty smart. So, like, parents are in the room while their kids are watching Sesame Street, and then here's a slightly more adult-tinged but still family-friendly sketch comedy show uh, with the same sort of puppetry. Eh. Yeah. Uh, I Wait, where were we going with that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> trying to sort out the, the rules of everything. I don't know. It's, you know, it's... Uh, it's weird because I feel like 10 years ago, everyone wanted a la carte cable channels, and that's what we have now. It's just online streaming services. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, but everybody hates it. I feel like that works but, out pretty well. But, but well, uh, but it's now, it's, now, it's going the, <laughs> now it's going the opposite way where, like, again, because mm. we're, we're going to, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Are you guys going to pay for HBO Max? I'm not. I mean, like, I'm already paying for Disney yeah. Plus, uh, Netflix, and Hulu, and I'm probably. Yeah, they're all, they all want a piece of the pie, and the pie, there's barely any pie left for us to cut up. <laughs> You know? Well, yeah, it's, it's our, gonna get zero piece, sum now. They're just gonna get so tiny. Well, I uh, what 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 blows my mind is that uh, this is like a hundred percent. Um, this is like an HD remake, but for video. Um, we get all of this stuff. We get all this stuff in games, right? Mafia Two, uh, Resident Evil Two, whatever. Um, I feel like I this is like, hey, remember that movie? It's coming back in HD, and there's a premium content. Like I feel like this announcement has has more rumbles than really any other content announcement. It's actually a pretty smart move, and it it like jumps on a uh, a narrative that a lot of people have really run with and held onto for a long time. Yeah, so yeah. I can I can I can applaud the PR move behind it. That's pretty cool. Our, our friends over um, over at uh, Internet Today, I was I retweeted this because it was it's pretty crazy. Back in November and December of last year, uh, Ricky and Elliot were talking about. Uh, I think Ricky was the one that started it, but he was like, uh, HBO Max is going to 100% have the Snyder Cut be their launch. Their la- like, It's going to help them launch the service. Really? And he said it a number of times back in November and December, and uh, he was totally right. And it was like one of those things where I, like, I watched it, and I was like, I mean, that's it's <laughs> super, super adept of them to, to notice that and see that. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I was just, I was just curious to see if people were excited about it or not. Like, I just didn't, I wasn't sure if that was something like, everyone's like, yeah, fuck yeah, HBO Max, like we're we're, we're in, or if it's like, sort of like, eh, whatever, you know, who cares? I don't know. I don't know anyone that's excited for another streaming service. You know, like I think Disney Disney Plus got in there just as the door was closing, Indiana Jones style, grabs the hat out and was <laughs> like, hey, we have the properties you loved as a kid. You know, at least that's what we have. And everyone's like, ah, all right, we'll give it to you. And then, like, after that, I don't think there's been any any uh, excitement for a new streaming service, you know? Yeah. Well, it's because there's no, there's no value proposition left. Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah, exactly. I, We're all, ever, ever since Netflix, really, fundamentally, ever since the first Netflix subscription, we've all had more media than we have time to watch. So then it's about trying to find these, like, prestige announcements that supersede the backlog of stuff that you already have in the back of your mind whenever you sit down to eat dinner or whatever. Zack Snyder Cut could be one of them. If for some reason you still think that that movie is going to be good or interesting, or you just really, really, really want to see Superman on screen that badly. Or Muppets. Oh, no, Muppets we decided was Disney, wasn't it? No, that's Sesame Street. Fuck. Sesame Street is HBO Max. Muppets is Disney+. Plus. No. You, you said it was the opposite. Did I? Then yes. I was I was opposite wrong before. No, no, it's, you're opposite it's, wrong. Sesame Street is HBO Max. Muppets is Disney oh. Plus. Weird. Okay. 
All, All right. right, I'm good then. As long as yeah, because well, it was also it was also a bit of a concern that parents were like, wait, like this used to be a public broadcast show. That, yeah, like it was nice to believe that there was free content out there that was good, that <laughs> was super constructive and, and instrumental in like remember that self esteem. Free... Yeah, mm. and now now parents have to pay for a screen, streaming subscription so their kids can watch Sesame Street. I guess sign of the times, whatever America rules, but um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like now it's just it's a fight for headlines and a fight to get people to yep. now it's yeah. just got to get them in and, and make them forget that they signed up. Um, I remember I canceled my Netflix subscription, my streaming subscription, when I like scrolled through and just within a within like two minutes couldn't find a movie I wanted to watch because they just stopped signing licensing deals. Mm. Um, Netflix has been trying to migrate over to I feel like TV. they've been yeah yeah they've been producing their own movies and TV and that's that's pretty smart really. But Netflix isn't really making anything that I care about. I also don't pay attention that much. So yeah, I guess I guess it is really really now just like who can find the announcement that's going to scream out over everything, and just like everything else, it's going to be remakes and re-releases and brands we already know and returning faces and like Star Trek Picard, like stuff like that. Mm. It's like hey, remember that old thing? It's back. Give us money, please. I, so. Yeah, I love the idea of like relaunching a franchise and just. Like picking the name of the person that people liked from the original to just remind them, hey, he's gonna be in this too. Like it's, oh man, it's, it's like if they're gonna do like The Simpsons two Homer. <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those things though. I mean, like because we all, it's funny because everybody I know, every single person I know in in uh, in this business and my friends and we all laugh at this. We all laugh at, oh, that's so funny. They're just always making remakes and always making sequels, blah, blah, blah. And then everybody goes and sees them and pays for them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't fucking wonder they're making that shit. It's just like, it's so funny because, like, I'll hear people bitch about Disney. They're like, oh, Disney. I'm tired of Star Wars. I'm tired of Marvel, blah, blah, blah. And then they go and see the movies. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh-huh. Don't go see the movies. <laughs> like, if, you if you Watch that wrinkle in time, baby. If you hate it. If you're tired of it, you got to stop going because otherwise they're going to keep making it. And uh, that's like I, I always point to Christopher Nolan because Christopher Nolan, after Batman, only has only made original properties. And to me, that's really cool. That's a really cool thing that he's yeah. done. He's, he's, and he's turned them into huge blockbusters for the studio, which is that is that is a uh, not that's not at all common for most movies that we see uh, nowadays. True. So. Yeah, and, and he's been able to mark them as a Christopher Nolan film. Yeah, and you know people go and watch it because they're just a fan of his his style. The, so the, he's a fan of fan of the creator. You know. Yeah. So. Oh, um, someone in someone in chat brought up a good point. Uh, I think it already already scrolled past. Unfortunately, I would like to credit it. Where'd it go? Anyway, uh, oh, there it is. Diamond Gay or Diamond Gay? Excuse me. <laughs> um, both still great names. Um, said like basically after Endgame, don't really care anymore. Or I was done with it. Pro- probably just referring to Disney and Marvel, but I'm curious. I'm curious to what degree that extends to the general population because I I have a theory. the The run of Marvel movies we got was essentially not that I'm a uh, you know comic historian or anything, but it really did feel like the greatest hits of like every individual property yeah. crammed into movies, yeah. um, and all concluding with this wonderful storyline that was probably the most attention grabbing thing that Marvel has ever done uh, in Infinity War. And they even got Civil War in there as like a, a sub note. Weird, weird stuff. But now that they kind of hit it all, I feel like, yeah, I feel like people have experienced the one turn. The build up, the huge payoff, the satisfying conclusion. Now Marvel's going to try to do it again. And I feel like people are going to get into what I experienced the first time I started reading comics, which is like, this is so awesome. Oh my God, amazing. This is the most amazing thing. And then get into the second arc. I'm like, oh, they're, they're doing it again. <laughs> And then doing it again, and then, and then we'll just keep like swapping out some names, but it's largely the same story as endlessly retold. That's what myth is. I'm not. I'm not like. I don't think that I'm being particularly intelligent by pointing that out. But I do think the general movie-going audience that got so swept up and enamored with the Marvel wave, and I think Star Wars kind of hit the same thing. Where it's like you have to be new, but the same. Uh, I wonder if maybe the check got cashed and mm. Z- Zack Snyder cut and all that. Maybe it is being like, hey, we get a do-over on DC. Now we can go back and do the Infinity War thing we should have done. Hmm. Um, but maybe people already got what they needed out of Endgame. I, and, I mean, uh, I always felt like the Justice League was playing like way, like just two years behind yeah. Marvel. Yes. And has there has never been room for them. <laughs> like they were always just at disadvantage because, you know, 
they're just doing it less smart than Marvel was. Yep. Um, no, so you're exactly right. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know if that's like particularly a new situation they find themselves in. I think they've always been at a disadvantage. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not as like clued into the Marvel universe, I think, as you two are. So could you walk me through kind of where we are in the timeline of like, you know, Marvel, like the, the Marvel mega plan you know well, like i know yeah, well, we're in f- there was the infinity war like arc and then now there's this new thing i had assumed that this new thing was just going to be like one off no you know, oh, wrap up th- or no, like no, no. i didn't know they're going through the whole thing again they're, they're going through an entire another phase they call it um and basically what they're doing is they're like they're wiping the slate clean of the of the superheroes you know so like the captain americas and the thors and the I, they i'm sure they will appear in movies but they're not the movies aren't based on them. Um, they're pushing forward with new uh, or recently introduced superheroes like Captain Marvel and obviously <laughs> Spider Man's not new, but they're doing it. Um, Spider Man and they have like the Eternals and they have Shang Chi and like uh, stuff like that. So it's a whole new phase, and Lawrence is probably right. It's probably going to turn into another time travel uh, galactic, you know crisis etc etc um and it just it honestly just hinges on whether or not the movies are good that's all it's really all it hinges on i don't i'm i'm here for it if the movies are good and if they're so they're wiping all the like current avenger characters people are saying that thor is still gonna be in it i okay but so everyone besides him are they just gonna like reintroduce a new cast I, i feel like they've already played their their ace cards you know like who is left in the marvel universe besides like the big heroes that we all. Well, so this know. is. I mean, I again, I'm not a huge comic guy. No, so I, I might have, it's a great question, and you're right. Like it's a, but the I, I'm going to go back to pointing at Iron Man, where nobody knew who the fuck Iron Man was, and then they made the movie and went, oh, mm. well, that was a good movie, and then they made True. other movies and they're like those weren't bad, those weren't bad. So that's what they have to do with us again. And in my and like I think like Lawrence was just saying, I think it's going to be really hard. I think it's gonna be way harder than it was when they released Iron Man. Um, but they have to do it again. They got to make us care about uh, characters that are we. I mean, I don't know who Shang Chi is. <laughs> like, I'm excited to see the movie. But I don't know what that is. I don't know what he does or who he is. Or, um, but I'm excited to see that Marvel movie because I know Marvel generally makes pretty good movies. So we'll see. I don't. Know. I I think I'm. I mean, I'm more interested just from like the programming aspect. Like, I how you can reintroduce a bunch of new characters that there is like little to no a- after stepping down from the the mammoth that is you know spider-man iron man like the hulk like all, all those like what are they gonna this this b team how do you make them not a b team i'm i'm i'll probably watch just to see how they try to pull that off because that to me is more interesting than the actual content you know yeah i don't know i mean there's there's been some there's been some massaging in that direction like you, you there was a literal handoff of Captain America to, to Falcon. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, Far Falcon? From Home was almost literally saying Peter Parker is the new Iron Man. So, uh, and the comics have been doing that too, of like uh, basically just rotating in new cast members to have new stories to tell. The idea being that like within comic books, at least generationally, you can speak to a new generation and the issues that confront them. Like Peter Parker was a freelance f- journalist photographer because that was the kind of job that a teenager could get, but that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Uh, so, like, if you have a 15-year-old a in 2020 who is a freelance photographer, like, that just doesn't really read. So, uh, what, what Marvel comic books are doing, and, and unfortunately I can't speak to DC because I, I just... In case it's a mystery, I just kind of don't care for DC, by and large. Um, and I have my, my reasons there, but whatever. Um, they, they will, like, cycle out their, their lead heroes with new characters. So, you know, like Ironheart instead of Iron Man, things like that. To try to make them more appealing to new generations and also tell stories that are more applicable to new generations. So, Marvel could certainly do that. Um, I mean, Iron Man's cinematic arc was kind of him confronting his own self-destructive lifestyle and his absentee father. Sort of. With middling success across the three Iron Man movies. Um, Those are maybe themes that don't resonate with the youths of today. So they can have a new Iron Man, Peter Parker step in and deal with millennial problems like old dads that don't want you to date their hot daughters and things like that. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's, that's where the magic comes from is, uh, is, is, you know, retelling the same story under new themes and a new framework that make them 
resonate with a new audience. Uh, theoretically, that's what the next wave of Marvel movies could do. It's amusing to think about the Zack Snyder cut in that in that context, because how possibly could they reframe that garbage pile of a movie to be something interesting? <laughs> um, but it'll be fun to watch them try. Uh, that's I can't I can't wait to get like I just realized this would be a cool album title, Edge of Blackout. I just gotta I gotta drink just enough oh. to be conscious, but barely, and then put mm. on the Zack Snyder cut. Also, four hours is a long time to try to maintain. A it's four hour state. long. <laughs> I mean, I think that's. Did anyone? Did anyone officially say that? I don't. I'm not just, sure. I'm, I, I, so by the Zack Snyder cut, this means we're not cutting anything for it. No, they're we're, adding. We're just putting all of the footage in the editing bay, and then just <laughs> letting it play. And you'll you'll hear them say, "Cut!" All right, I'll do it one more time, and then just cuts to the next scene. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the, the announcement was it was all post. It was all post. Like they're going to go in with editors and post uh, post effects teams do, to re people, rework the movie. Do people not remember? That Batman vs. Superman was a movie Zack Snyder made and was two hours and 45 minutes long, and it's painfully oh. boring. It is, like, pain... And, and also, critically panned, audience panned, everybody hates it except for Greg Miller. Yeah. And it's just, like... <laughs> it's it's like one of those things where, like, how do they... I, I, I don't know. I, I, me, to me, it just seems like there's a uh, hundred thousand people out there that are like, yeah, <laughs> and then the re- that's not a lot of is, people. A hundred thousand people is not a lot. Yeah, and then everybody else the, is like in the scheme of things. Everybody else is like, ah, okay, whatever. Yeah, sure, go ahead, put the movie out. I don't care. Um, oh, Batman v Superman does have a director's cut. Oh, sick. Oh my oh, gosh. No. Oh. All right. Is this right. longer? I guess yeah, that's what director's how long cuts is are. the director's cut? Yeah. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it to be. Added. I I would actually would and and this is this is not for the sake of debate or for the sake of argument. I would really like to hear from somebody who acknowledges Batman v Superman wasn't great. Um, it, matter of opinion, whatever. I'm I'm not going to tell someone they're dead wrong. Although you know, <laughs> maybe maybe deserve some reevaluation. They like Batman v Superman, but I, I want to find the person who's like Batman v Superman was trash. Justice League was trash, but Zack Snyder could have fixed it. Like, I wonder how somebody can reconcile those two ideas about knowing that Zack Snyder made Batman v Superman and it was very bad. And then Justice League, for some reason, the omission of Zack Snyder made everything worse. But the studio was, was holding him, how. Lawrence, the studio was holding him down. The studio was, was holding him back and Batman v Superman and Zack Snyder finally gets to do what he does best, which is make four hours long movies. Well, okay. This may be a sensitive topic to one of us on this on this podcast, but oh, Game of Thrones. I think there's a... a no. Oh, no. Actually, I wasn't going to go there, but similar. He's going to call somebody out? It's time? Cancel culture? Cancel well, him, Kraken. Drop the If I hammer. was going to cancel someone, it would be you, Lawrence, for making oh, me no. pick someone to cancel. Oh. That, that's a 180, okay? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm calling you out. I can't I believe. didn't ask for this bit. You forced it on me, and then you backed up. You said I would cancel someone, and everyone else would jump on it. So go ahead. Jump on it. Jump on your own sword. I can't believe I'm finally getting canceled. I can't believe it. I knew Congratulations. it. I knew it. For years I said, everyone's working against me, and no one believed me. It's because my thoughts are too independent for you, Kraken. <laughs> That's why you got to come at me like this. My problem is I'm too independent of a thinker. Wow. What a, You're too individual. What a, yeah, yeah. People I, attack the insurgent. You're the white blood cell, and I'm the... No, wait. Yeah, wait. Is this a good analogy to make right now? Uh... Whatever, I'm already canceled. You're the you're COVID. Yeah, you're <laughs> I'm the I'm the fire. Yeah, I was gonna say Lawrence Surprise, everyone. Lawrence is COVID. You've been watching. Lawrence yeah. is COVID. Oh, oh Man, dear. What if yeah, I, I guess you are COVID in human form. That's probably the worst thing I could say to anyone, but <laughs> there you have it. I mean it's true though, when I show up, uh, social social gatherings just destruct immediately. Yeah, they everyone socially distances themselves from you already. It's just <laughs> kind of a matter of, you know, making them more aware of it. That wasn't this what I was going to say. You, you you asked me to say yeah, that. What, I was, yeah, what were you going to say? I was going back to the topic of uh, directors and studios and giving you know giving creative leeway versus not. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because um, I was going to say a good example of this, I think, is the prequels of Star Wars with George Lucas. Oh, yeah. Because the original Star Wars, George Lucas did not have his way That's correct. in every way he wanted. Yeah. He had the world, and then the studio kind of tempered it to make the original three movies that everyone loves and feels like are a perfect story. And then in the prequels, he's like, all right, but I get to do it my way. And then suddenly it's like... Trash. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just like midichlorians and it's like global politics, trade federation, tariffs, and like a bunch of stuff that, you know, could be done cool, but was a little too, I think, heavy-handed and also trying to be a kid's movie. So I think the same thing can be said for... 
this whole Snyder situation is like there's a devout set of followers that really like Snyder's creative vision. Um, and then people are just assuming that anything bad is coming from the studio when I think there's often actually good, you know, studio input that, you know, if you look at the original Star Wars is kind of how that happened. Or maybe it was other creatives on the team. I don't know if the studio had much of a role in it, obviously, but um, I don't know, just my, my well, thoughts. Well, Anyways. well, Kraken, you bring up a very interesting point because it's like the right creative team has to make something good <laughs> because basically... You're right. Now that you say it that way, it's a very safe take. No, no, it's not about your take. It's more about the, the fact that like, on, in some cases, the studio helps. In other cases, the studio actually mm-hmm. really does hurt. Like it really does. Like sometimes they'll water it down too much, and it becomes like you know they're they're selling it to all audiences, so they're making it for nobody. Um, and it just turns out that it, you just need the right people making the right content. Um, and, and that's this is something that I've noticed. Uh, I can only boil it down to individual creators in my brain. So like generally, people always talk about Christopher Nolan as uh, oh yeah, he's a singular creator, he's a writer director, et cetera, et cetera. That's true. He's surrounded by a hundred other people that are always with him for every movie. Uh, for a long time, it was uh, Deacons was his cinematographer, and um, his wife is always uh, an executive producer, or producer on his movies. Um, so he's surrounded by the same people, and his brother generally helps him write films. Yeah. So it's kind of like, uh, but we only see it as oh, it's a Chris Nolan vehicle. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the best example of creativity by collaboration is Marvel. Um, because Kevin Feige was sort of the, you know, the brains behind the whole thing. But he didn't direct any of the movies. Um, and each one of those movies is pretty good, but also they vary, right? Thor Ragnarok's fantastic. And Captain America, for, uh, the first Avenger is kind of like, eh, it's fine. Um, and in my opinion, that's like, those are, that, those are huge wins coming from our, our place of work. Because we know how hard it is to make something... Uh, large and creative and collaborate with other people. Man, is that hard. Gosh, that's so fucking hard. So, um, and to make it good, to make it uh, so that a lot of people like it. Um, so yeah, so like I, I think Zack Snyder, in my opinion, benefits from having studios temper his work. Uh, right. I think George Lucas benefits from uh, having a studio temper his work or having other creators sort of come in and like Urban Kirshner or um, Lawrence Kasdan, or people that collaborated with him on Empire and Jedi. Uh, I think they, he benefits from that. But there are other creators, maybe not as much. Um, maybe they don't require as much oversight because they already have a really good creative team around them. So it's, yeah. it's really and tough. And I think usually the, the studio usually adapts to that. You know, they see that, you know, the Nolans have put out so many successful films and they're like, all right, you know, we're just going to give you a budget. Well, give us updates on how it's going, and otherwise, like that's that's your guy's thing. Um, compared to you know, if they give too much, uh, what's the on like a leash? Too much? Uh, oh, oh, like they you know, like they give them they give them too much leeway. They give them too much. Yeah, and then yeah. and they see they're getting they're they're starting to stray. You know, that's when they they actually have to start pulling them back. So yeah, it's uh, I, I, I don't slack. Know. That's the word. Slack. Okay, yeah. So I mean, like we were we all come from these spaces and we've all had to make something with uh, a bunch of other people and we all know how like if you have a creative vision it might get uh, diluted or it might um, become something that you weren't necessarily thinking it would be Um, and that's just what happens when you bring other people into a project Uh, and you just got to make sure that you are cool with the people that you're bringing in and also that they like they are thinking along the lines that you're thinking Um, because maybe they're not and that's that's why when I point at movies like Sucker Punch or uh, BBS, those are movies that, for all intents and purposes, from what I can see, Zack Snyder had complete oversight on everything he was doing. And it, it's not very good. So, to me, I'm like, I don't really want to see that again. <laughs> like, I don't want to see what he could do. I would like to see uh, the same producing team that he had for 300. Um, or the same producing team that he had for Watchmen. Uh, collaborate with him on these movies rather than him being like it's four hours and it's whatever I want I was like oof I don't know (laughs) I'm not sure but if that's what the audience wants Bruce good point isn't the audience right because the audience demanded that Sonic the Hedgehog change and it did and and it was good (laughs) so if the audience is 
is oh, smashing boy. their phones, tweeting that they need the Snyder Cut and they want the Snyder Cut and they know that Snyder's going to do this. How, who are we to say that they're wrong when all the evidence says that the crowd is always right? <laughs> I, I hadn't actually thought about that, but the, the I told you so like power of Sonic. being right about Sonic is probably having a destructive effect on 100% like on audience culture and uh instructing us to do to change you know it's like Ooh. well look what we did to the sonic movie and then, <laughs> you know that's going to become the the narrative for i don't know i don't know how many franchises but the, I, the fact I, is they didn't do anything nobody did anything I, yeah they didn't they just complained. Yeah, that, they that, complained that was their power and it quote unquote worked in their minds i'm sure um hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I got to think about that. Lawrence, Lawrence, you bring up a fantastic point about Sonic. Cause, oh, I didn't mean to. Whoops. No, it's, that, it's, a really, that, it's a really good point. I mean, because like Sonic the movie, in my opinion, the, I don't know that the movie is any better or worse because his look has changed. It definitely... It, I think it's better. It's better. It, no, 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 I'm not... What I just oh, said. The, you mean like the, the movie, yeah. like the story or the writing or the, you know, like... Oh. It doesn't affect that shit, obviously. But but yes, he, de- he definitely looks better, 100%. I think it helps the movie if the if he looks better. Um, but I don't know that it was like, oh yeah, well now the story's better because he's got bigger eyes. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure that that's like it, better. You can buy into the character more, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Dude, uh, brilliant idea. Uh, we launch our own streaming platform, but we have the original Sonic the Hedgehog cut. <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> also, it's only that movie and this one podcast. Does that exist? How are we gonna get our hands on this? Yeah, we gotta find are we, it. Are we gonna break into Sony and? Yeah, I'll go get my I'll get my turtleneck sweater. I'll get my beanie. We'll figure it out. All we need is a square rug and a ladder, and we can get in anywhere we want. I would uh, I would love to see the original Sonic cut with with whatever his Sonic is uh, his real life teeth and little eyes. Yeah, and the real Sonic that we deserve. And yeah, and then see if that like what you should we should have a blind watch test because i've never seen sonic yet I haven't, I haven't seen sonic so i, want, I haven't either uh, yes yeah, so, what so i want to what i want to do is lawrence if you can find the original sonic cut i'll watch okay. them back to back and then tell you which one was better all right fair yeah uh this yep we'll do that we'll absolutely do that give me a week or two i'm gonna have to i'm gonna i might have to go to the second page of google search results but i'm sure i can figure it out <laughs> um i don't know there, when when the whole Sonic thing went down, there were a lot of think pieces kind of implying that if we give too much control to the masses, then like that'll be the death of creativity uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and and also on some level, it was uh, like it was it was another shadow battle in the fight between like I don't know. I, there's there's like there's people that invest pretty heavily into this weird shadow culture war uh, between um, I guess progressive content i don't know it, it got it got mixed up in this whole like uh wait sonic did yeah it, <laughs> it, it it's not it's not explicitly connected it's more like uh people people should not brigade to have changes made uh in that way and to do so felt like it was empowering uh the audience if they just mm. vent negativity then they get their own way this is this has been an issue in like to, to make it on a micro scale been an issue in like game community circles where like game creators will change a game or make certain design decisions and then people will get really mad like if uh to to be specific about it there are a lot of instances where like if a game gets released in the west an anime girl will be wearing slightly more pants than she was in japan and people get very very upset about this call it censorship and all that right um, so the concern is that if creators are seen changing their output because of community reaction, and especially if that, if that makes the product perform better, there is concern that then uh, there will be a movement in entertainment companies to change their creative output based on how people complain. Uh, and then that, that, is, that has concerns that it will in- inhibit the progression of, of media and representation and matters of representation and gender equality and all that there there was concern about that so like that's something i don't i don't know where i'm going with that well, <laughs> aside from there is that concern out there well lawrence allow me to blow your mind and maybe this Please is do. maybe this has already happened in a an industry in a venue that we consume every single day known as pop music 
<laughs> we may be already years and years and years ahead into that with pop music because it's like a lot of people complain about how it's being made for the masses and it's like it's all it all sounds the same it's all the same chord progressions it's all the same artists and songwriters and producers etc cetera, etc cetera. um well it may already be happening and you know are you okay with it or are you like fuck pop music i don't want to listen to anything by Justin Bieber ever it's all trash i will only listen to neutral milk hotel and <laughs> <laughs> and uh and then from there you, you know like are you are you the one that's leading a revolution or are you just sort of like shouting into the abyss i don't know i'm not sure the the to, to make the analogy complete you would have to argue that justin bieber is causing societal harm because of his creative output <laughs> that's true <laughs> i mean I, I i hate to make it sound oh my god yeah that pl- poor flamingo <laughs> sorry a flamingo just bombed right into it like a bridge <laughs> oh, it's okay collapsed into the water yeah um yeah I, uh, it's interesting i i feel like there are a couple of examples somebody somebody in my chat pointed out that yeah like <laughs> Christ, that, that bird hit that wall so hard. Um, that, like, Bethesda, shockingly, was recently in a bit of a pickle because of Doom Eternal. They added De Nuvo Anti-Cheat, oh, yeah. which yeah. Uh, made the game inoperable on some machines. So um, they actually Why announced it. Add... Oh, because of the, the online it. multiplayer. Okay. Because of multiplayer. And yeah, yeah. actually, Marty Stratton, again, had to get on Reddit and type a two-page post <laughs> trying to calm people down. Um <laughs> Not to sound like I'm trying to be dismissive of like if you bought a game and then a patch makes it inoperable, that's shitty. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh wait, they were I don't know if they removed it today. They announced their next update will remove it. Um, so that's another instance of the the internet being angry and then a company pretty much uh quickly moving to adjust. So I don't know that that's they swell in power. Bad thing. Yeah. 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 Get people are getting drunk on power now. All right, hey, uh, hey, viewers, it. look, look, we're with you guys, all right? No need to, no need to make any angry comments, okay? We're, we're, we're here to work with you. We want to help bring you entertainment. Just, you know, please don't, don't tell us you don't like what we're doing because then we're going to have to change it. Kraken's about yeah. to get canceled Immediately. right now. I could, I could smell it. I could smell it in the water. And then... I'm trying to get out ahead of it. <laughs> Getting out ahead in of our, it. I'm, in our I'm chat. already apologizing before I do anything wrong. So there. In our chat, I can see, I can see them getting ready to type cancel Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> They're already typing. They've been typing it the entire time. Oh, yeah. And also, id Software admitted it was entirely their decision and Bethesda had nothing to do with it. So... It got mixed up with a lot of people who were mad at Bethesda and just wanted a reason to yell at them. Yeah. So uh, it, gets, it gets complicated, as it turns out. Um, Bruce, I really like the point you made, though, that, that creators often voluntarily change and alter their product to make it perform better. Um, oh, all the time. I, yeah. So some, that's something that I feel like uh, gets lost in some of those discussions of, like, sure, the Sonic the Hedgehog creators had their vision of Sonic, but once they got the backlash, they probably looked at it and were like, okay, this movie needs to make money. I mean, I think the animation studio went out of business before it even came out. So, oh, jeez. I don't know that there was a lot of a lot of face saved there. But when it comes to like uh, com- altering output, often that's voluntary. I mean, even the id software thing. Everyone likes to imagine this narrative where a big oppressive corporation or a big oppressive viewership, some kind of oppressor, forces somebody to change their creative output against their will. Or I feel like. More often than not, sometimes those changes are made because they are balanced in the wake of everything, and the creator agrees and goes along with the, the change because they know it'll make the product better in the end, or perform better in the end. Whether or not that's better to your individual tastes is kind of separate. So that's something to think about, something to acknowledge, I think. I mean, I, I'm sure, Kraken, how many times have you been making a project, like a larger creative project, and somebody's come in and been like, hey, we got to change this one thing. Um... Is that okay with you? How many times have you said, and obviously don't, you don't need to quantify, but it's like, uh, have you said, hey, that's okay. You know what? Let's let's just go with that. Or you were like, no, I'm holding the line here. Uh, we will not change it. How many times has that happened to you? Um, I now that I think about, it, I think I usually get a lot of creative leeway. I don't. It's really rare that I've had that that piece of comment. That's great. I there has been a couple times, probably during like a sponsorship video, and I don't, I don't think there's ever been a time that I've been like. No, I, there's probably been at least one. There's definitely been at least one time where I've been like, "That's too heinous of a <laughs> of a request," and I will not be doing that. Here is a half like I, I'll do a halfway make good yeah. a compromise, yeah. and then if they have an issue with that, then we'll take it from there. But usually, as long as you made an effort in the direction that they had said something, then it would uh, 
it would assuage the 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 complaint. But yep. yeah, I, I've been lucky in that I haven't really had to compromise that much. Or if I do, then it's like a, a minor thing. It's just, I mean, well, we have a yeah. question from chat here. Oh, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the pushback on the cum ship and sev tech? I don't know what any of that means. but Cum ship and sev tech? Oh, you were talking about Minecraft. Yeah. Yes, that is a question for me. Uh, yes, I, it I'll is feel that one. Specifically for Kraken. Um, my brain had to like sort through a couple files to figure out <laughs> why that registered. I was like, "Why do I know what that is?" And then it it hit me. Uh, yeah. So it, in SevTech, it's, we're playing a, a Minecraft mod uh, on stream that lets us age like civilization style, age up by learning things in Minecraft. And so I had built with my buddy Shane a ship. And underneath that ship, we have been worshiping old gods and using a blood altar, uh, which has been like, it's like a hidden, you know, grotto thing. But in doing so, it has caused demons to be summoned to the ship, which has then burned down the ship. So it's now a shipwreck, which was the, the point all along, is we have like a shipwreck. Uh, and then recently, another person on the server, Gmart, uh, had aged up to get uh, to the industrial kind of revolution. And in doing so, invented steam. And steam is a cool item in Minecraft with this mod, which lets you dump a bucket of steam and it functions like water where it just kind of trickles out, but it's completely walk throughable and it has no effect on you. So he said, oh, I have this new thing. And I'm like, we could fill our boat with this stuff and it's going to look like fog and it's going to be great. So oh. he comes over and he starts <laughs> dumping steam all over this boat. And I, I still think it looks kind of cool. Um, but chat is convinced that now it's a cum ship right. because yes. it's just this like milky viscous liquid that's leaking out of all the holes in my ship and like it's just pouring out of every orifice and uh, it's just permanently there. So I don't know why this was brought up on the podcast, but here it is. That's my, <laughs> my cum ship story. Well, no, it's not what they're saying is so now the chat is. Did you get pushback on a, on a sponsor or something because of that? No. Oh no! It's just a thing. Chat. No, this. Was this, at. this. I was gonna okay. Say, <laughs> I thought it was topical for some reason. It isn't topical. It's I, just here, a comment I, on Twitch. I'm gonna attempt. All right. I'm gonna attempt to make it topical. Uh, okay. All right. Chat is saying they are part of the creative process when you're streaming, and mm. that it's called the cum ship, but Kraken doesn't want to. So what does Kraken do? Does he compromise with the chat, and call it the ejaculate, ship? or does he hold the line and say no? It's just really cool fall. Well, I hold the line also because I know the more you deny something, the more Twitch chat loves it. So I'm I'm willing to them to have their little fun toy if I just keep telling them that it's not what it is. Did you hear? So. Did you hear that? That is amazing. Hey, this is creator is uh the one of the smartest creators I <laughs> I have ever heard and met uh, by the name of Kraken. Is he's using the chat's emotions and manipulating that get the wow. get what he wants. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Cancel. Too smart. <laughs> Broke the meta for Twitch. Um, yeah, I, I think that's probably what they were getting at. Is that, is that you, you have to change your creative direction. I mean, and it, on a much smaller scale. A very, very much smaller scale. That's that's what that is. Like, Twitch stream is, is that. you got the audience there, and they're like, no, you know, name your Pokemon Dick. And you're just like, okay, all right, yeah, all right. I'll name my Pokemon Dick. And then you got to deal with your Pokemon Dick for the for the rest of the game. Um, mm -hmm. but, and that viewer stops watching 10 minutes later. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. I got what I wanted. Yep. And, and then they're ba and they bail. Um, <laughs> yeah. But there's, I think, the larger, in the larger scales, like with, uh, like, Lawrence and I, with we worked at Rooster Teeth or Machinima or work with larger brands, like Pringles or whatever else. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying Pringles is a problem, but... Those those sorts of things, then it becomes weird because then there's a, it's just then there's money involved, and when there's money involved, then it becomes a really weird, uh, it's like a um, there's an underlying agreement that when you're like, hey, I'm gonna like again just for the sake of argument, Pringles says we want you to wear this helmet that feeds you food, uh, and Kraken goes, what? I would never do that, even though Kraken did it. Um, this, this is, and I would totally do that <laughs> too, by the way. Um, but imagine that, like, you were like, well, that's not at all on brand for me. And then $10,000 and you go, all right, I'm willing to compromise my brand just that much to, uh, get me to continue making my own brand outside of Pringles. And that's what 
movies are. That's what television is. There's, I could guarantee mm-hmm. you that there are thousands of emails about every single movie you're, you know and love where the, uh, the studio is sending an email to the producer or the director that's like, you can't make the brand the fucking king. And they're like, we're going to make brand the king at the end because that's what fucking Martin told me to do. And that makes sense. And it's a good little subversion, et cetera. Like, you're going to be bad. I promise you there are those emails that exist for every single uh, thing that you've seen or love or whatever else. Um, and it's, I, I always think it's amazing that a creator can make something that fulfills uh, everybody's desires when it comes to what it is because they had to get through all that. And holy shit, is it hard. <laughs> it is so, so hard. Man. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of compromised visions, I, uh, I, I can't remember. Stop me if I talked about this before, but Batman Forever. All right. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, recently read the novel and, uh, then, then compared it with the film. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reach my conclusion early and then back it up. We need a Joel Schumacher cut of Batman Forever. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Um, if you recall Batman Forever, we've all seen it a lot. There's a lot of imagery of like an open diary in the in the movie, and uh, never knew why because it's not really justified at all in the film. It is a film. I'm going to use that word. Um, <laughs> turns out, if you read the novelization, <clears throat> it's supposed to lean into a guilt complex that Bruce Wayne has because one of the last things he read in the diary that his dad wrote was that Bruce had insisted that they go see a movie that night when his parents got shot. So when young Bruce read that after his dad was dead, he blamed himself. And then in the book, developed a, like a, a suicidal complex because of his guilt. Huh. He was going out and fighting criminals all night, hoping that one of them would actually kill him and remove him of his guilt. And when he reached this epiphany, he then self-actualized as a real Batman and decided he would go out and fight for justice instead of uh, trying to fight his suicidal tendencies. Ooh. Now in the film... What we get is a throwaway line from one Bruce Wayne who just says, When I saw his diary, I realized he'd never write in it again. And that's it. Now, I posit that all of the diary imagery was left in the film because that was how the character was supposed to be written. Then at some point, somebody at Warner was like, Batman can't be suicidal! Yeah. And just chalked it all out of the film. Um, And then one line just paved over the gap, and that was it. And because since the rest of the movie is such a masterpiece, we never questioned it as a (laughs) movie-going audience. But here's the deal. I think that's a pretty cool interpretation of Batman. And also, there have been other interviews with Val Kilmer where he's talking about his portrayal as Batman. And he said something to the effect of, like, Batman's not a character. Like, I I had to act that role like anyone in the audience could put themselves in my place because all I was was a cardboard cutout. I'm not, he, I think his, his line was like, I'm not Batman because nobody's Batman when it came to like other Batman actors claiming to be Batman or whatever. Right. Um, and then I was like, well, that's true, Val. However, there is a version of that movie where Batman is a character, but unfortunately you didn't get that screenplay. Mm. So there's, there's a mystery afoot here. There's a mystery. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if the person who novelized the film got a very early copy of the screenplay and was writing the novel to that. And then it went through revisions and then into production with Schumacher, who I can only assume was driving his hardest to keep suicidal Batman in the movie. Um, was he, though? So, you know, I, I can only assume. Okay. Um, with, with, the, uh, with not only the, the creative integrity that we saw rooted in every aspect of Batman Forever, but then on to his next, and some would say superlative work, uh, Batman and Robin. Oof. Uh, so perhaps one day we'll get the Batman and Robin cut, uh, Schumacher cut. I just say we make Zack Snyder recut every Batman, but only in post. I think that would be pretty sick. I think um, if, we, so. if we get the Joel Schumacher cut, we're going to add it to what are we going to call it? Krakenvod. Um, Ooh, the, our, our new. What, the, our, why am I being? The, why am I the face of this now? Because people love you. That's why. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you give them just enough so they they keep they keep yeah. coming back. We'll but, call, and not an inch more. We'll call it. We'll call it uh, <laughs> Kraken Max. Kraken Max, and it'll be. Mm. The Sonic, the original Sonic cut, the Joel Schumacher Batman Forever cut, and then this podcast. Now, how fast? <laughs> That's well worth the money. Uh, how how fast do you think Sony lawyers would bang down our door if we were to release <laughs> release the original Sonic movie uh, just 
on our own like pay gate <laughs> streaming software. That might be the fastest lawsuit ever. It's a. I think the more fun wager is how long does it take them to find out? <laughs> like if we launch I, the whole thing, shockingly fast. I mean, you I think? I, okay. I feel like they're. I mean, one of these assholes watching this thing would rat, rat us out immediately. Yes, they with, would. With the potential for any sort of bounty. Yes, they would. I, I have no question about that. 100%. The, the people in chat are all snitches. And you know what they say about yeah. snitches? Snitches get stitches. So, uh, Bruce, that's TOS. You cannot threaten our viewers. What? Even if we would love to give them stitches. I'm not threatening them. You can't them. say that. I am not threatening it's, them at all. I'm just letting right. you know there is, there is a fray. <laughs> <laughs> promise. <laughs> well, so Kraken Max uh, comes out um, in July. For we got we got a let's say thirty dollars a month. Thirty. We're gonna tease it at CryCon. We're gonna yeah. show you a little sneak peek. Oh, so make sure uh, to come to CryCon. I know everyone's canceled their conventions because of the ep epidemic. I'm happy to say CryCon is not canceled. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, we're just gonna do it anyway. <laughs> That's bold. <laughs> It is bold, you know. You, you got to make a bold decision. We we looked at the financials and we said we'd make more money if people still bought tickets than if they didn't. You're right. So we're gonna have we're gonna <laughs> so have the convention. You're right about that. Also, uh, masks. You don't need masks when you go to CraigCon. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, just we're gonna have a big swimming pool. Let's all just get in and. I Go say we, buck wild. I say we put everybody in an eight by eight room that's uh, recirculated air. For, uh. for about four hours. <laughs> Everybody's got to crowd around and watch the clips off my yeah, phone. Yeah. The sneezing competition comes <laughs> after the first hour. <laughs> of, yeah. Oh, man. CryCon's going to be a hoot. I can't wait. It's going to be a hoot. I am really excited. By the way, uh, admission for CryCon is $500 a ticket. I just wanted everybody That's to true. be aware. Unless you're getting the VIP pass, which comes with its very own... Uh, I don't know. I got nothing. I, I, I was <laughs> just saying, it comes with your, I, comes with I your ran very out of own, creative juices. It comes with your very own COVID swab that you put up your nose. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But it's, can, it's like, not, it's just a swab. It's not part of a testing kit. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's not, just something you can jam up into your sinuses no, no, if you want you, to. You guys got it wrong. It's not testing for COVID. It has COVID on it. So you put it up your oh. nose. Oh. It's like a vaccine, you but can, it's not. You can be patient zero for yeah. $5,000. <laughs> yeah. We will make you patient zero. <laughs> Dude, oh. <laughs> the, 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 again, this is an incubator. This is an incubator podcast. Of course, of course, yeah. Here's a, here's another show for Crymax. Um, Crymax <laughs> is the name. <laughs> yeah, uh, a reality show where contestants have to get COVID as fast as they can. Oh jeez! Like, oh oh man! Starting, we we can film it at Crycon. This is great. All right, we'll already have everyone there. We'll have everybody Just there. Just run yeah. to a hospital with your mouth open, going <laughs> ah. <laughs> I mean, will that in. work? Is that Taking the most efficient way? I don't really know. deep breaths. Yeah. <laughs> like, sir, sir, stop taking such deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! God. I'll be following, like recording on recording on my phone, wearing a hazmat suit. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this is uh, I can't wait That's for messed up. Crycon and Crymax. It, I, this this brand that we're establishing, it's going to I want to say live for the next fifty. Maybe 100 years. So, anyway, how yeah. long? What's the incubation for COVID? That's, it's like two weeks. Yeah, it's like two weeks. <laughs> It'll last we got least three, two weeks. Three weeks max then. <laughs> yeah. Three weeks. People got to be watching something when they're in the hospital, right? Well, sign up for uh, go to go to crymax.com or whatever. I don't know how to spell it yet, but uh, crymax.com. That's where you can sign up. I don't know how to spell our website yet. <laughs> eh. Just keep Googling until it shows up. I'm sure we'll make it eventually. <laughs> All right. That's the end of the podcast. We made it to the end. Um, hey. Oh. Hey, YouTube. Even though there's only a few of you left watching on YouTube, we appreciate it. Thank you very yeah. much for, for watching and uh, listening on your uh, Spotify and your iTunes, reviewing the podcast whenever you get a chance. Thank you for listening to Talk to the Internet, number twenty. Nine? Am I right? Twenty-nine. Nine. Twenty-nine. Yeah. Twenty-nine. I've seen some and we're comments. still feeling fine. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do a rhyme after everyone now. That's the new thing I, I'm starting. All right. Oh, I can't. Bits. I can't wait to find out what you do for thirty. Um. All right. Thirty. Uh, feeling flirty. Oh, I ruined it. Yo, don't, I, I'll yeah, save that for next. Yeah, time. you gotta do the next one. Um. All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you later, YouTube. Bye, everybody. Bye, YouTube. Love you.